In the highlands, 70 miles from Melbourne, a hundred nameless streams chatter together to make the Yarra, the city's river. But there's nothing of the city about the Yarra's source. It meanders down the winding valleys, lazy and careless, twisting and turning, stretching the 70 miles to a wandering 200. The sunlight dances in a thousand sparkles from every ripple. But the arrow water is more than sparkle. It's the life of Melbourne's people, their supply. On the upper Yarra, men and machines are pounding the earth to shape. The shape of still another dam to hold water for the taps and pipes of Melbourne. Supply has to grow with the city. The Upper Yarra is the latest addition to the battery of dams storing water. The older dams have supplied Melbourne for years. At Maroondo, the scars of construction are gone. Man has returned the countryside to nature in a more formal way. The autumn gold makes a public utility into a pleasure ground. There are dams too on the Yarra's tributaries, the Watts and the O'Shaughnessy, all holding water for Melbourne. This water flows along the straight lines of the aqueducts while the river wanders on out of the hills to the farmlands. In spring, the orchards along the banks are fields of blossom, a promise of harvest. Pumps bring the river water to the market gardens, growing vegetables for the city, while riverside pastures fatten the sheep and cows. The willow trees along the banks were foreigners when they came. They've grown to be part of the peaceful Yarra landscape. As well as autumn gold, there is spring gold, the blaze of the wattle. For miles along the golden avenues, there's new beauty at every river bend. In the spring freshers, the arrow runs fast and high under the wattle bursting into bloom. This is a time of nothing, except to enjoy the blaze of colour along the river banks. Here and there on the river's middle reaches, there are townships dotted about. At Lilydale, the limestone quarries strike an industrial note. But this is still the country, and the small towns are centres for the farm or for the weekenders in the Yarra Hills. This was once the land of the Aborigines. And on a hill overlooking the river, the last of the Yarra tribe of Aborigines rests.
But the country that filled Barak's eye now fills the eye of the artist. Hands and skill catch the yellow color to grace a wall, or mold the shape of nature to the shape of dreams, or tap out words to capture the magic of the yellow for distant readers. There's room to play along the banks of the Yarra, to ride along the old bush tracks, to drive over the new highways that follow the river, to use for games the sports grounds that were once part of the riverside farms. Yarra is near a town now. A string of bridges crosses it. Bridges to carry the people of Melbourne to their homes. The houses of the suburbs look down on the swirling water, their gardens reaching to the river's edge. But the Yarra Bend golf course still has a country look to it, although the towers of Melbourne are in sight on the horizon. It's beginning to be an industrial river. The factories stand on the bank, as close to the river as they can get. Not for the scenery, but for the water. The Yarra has commercial value now, a sure and pure supply for industry. Pleasure launches travel down to the city between parks on either bank of the river for use and enjoyment. The pioneers built Melbourne on the Yarra because they needed fresh water. Their small village has become a great city, but the river still serves it. Along the city's edge it makes its way, past railways and factories, warehouses, shops and offices. Through the 150 years since its discovery, the Yarra has watched Melbourne grow gum trees and the wattle have gone. The towers and chimneys of industry have come. But people still live by the river. Right in the city, houseboats are moored to make homes, where the first settlers made their camp long ago. And it remains a river for play, even where it becomes a road for commerce. Moving to the sea, it passes between the miles of wharves where ships from every part of the world tie up, unload, and load again. It is a rich river. The sparkling waters of the highlands trapped in the dams, the farms of the lower reaches, the industries along the banks, the ships that sail from the mouth, these make the Yarra what it is, the river of the city of Melbourne.